Okay, so my Sea Chen. Sea Ken. Sea Ken would probably make more sense in terms of pronunciation. Fluorite, dark, premium natural substrate for planted aquariums just came in. And I went with the brown this time because most of the tank is going to be brown on the bottom. And I feel like if it was completely black, it wouldn't really match the substrate up top. So I figured brown was a better way of going. Oh, and um, I have a border in the tank right now. He's not going to be there permanently. But uh, he's just there for now. He just needed a place to live. And this tank was the only one that was open at the moment. All the other ones are taken up with things. So he'll just be hanging out today while I'm working. Hopefully he really doesn't get in the way. He seems to be pretty well behaved. But anyway, I'm going to start getting to setting up the aquarium portion of this tank. Actually, before I add this sea chem gravel, I need to uh, strain it a little bit, or at least that's what's suggested. I feel like they're might be washing away some sort of nutrients in the soil by doing this, but if that's what the back of, back of the bag says to do, I'm going to just try and trust that it is the right thing to do. But yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Once I'm done with that, I'll move on to actually uh, setting up the aquarium. Okay, so... Rinsed out all the clay, or sub clay substrate. And I'm going to start adding it now. Hopefully while I'm doing this, this mantis behaves and doesn't try anything funny. I'd rather just leave him in the tank if possible. I think I've rinsed out enough for the substrate level of this. The only thing I'm concerned about is aesthetically just matching the color scheme of above. Although chances are some of the cocoa choir at some point is going to be falling into this. And there's already a little bit there now. I don't know, we'll see when it's all done. As for plants, I have a couple already. I got some java moss. I got a couple of sword plants. I don't have much past that. I'm still deciding if I want to add to the nubias. They're a good low light plant, which should work with this particular setup because while I am going to be doing some, uh, I'm planning on doing a mirror trick actually with this tank with the side that you're filming from and the back. Oh, you can't even see because of the haze. Oh, either way, I can still talk. With the side that I'm working on in the back of the tank, I'm going to be adding mirrors to try and actually Let me just use a piece of cloth and clear that up, and hopefully it doesn't come back. I mean, it's not the most interesting thing in the world, me just throwing gravel into the bottom of a fish tank, but the one you're staring at, and um, nothing going on on the screen either. The mantis is still behaving. But I'm planning on putting mirrors in the back of the tank and on the side that I'm filming from right now. What I hope to get is increased light, especially if the light is coming from the front of the tank. Well, the front side, right side. It should reflect it. And it also should make the bottom look a little bit bigger as well. Oh good, the mantis just moved to the back of the tank. I probably cleaned a little bit more substrate than I needed to. I don't know why I might end up 
putting a little bit of extra soil. Or I may just put this back in the bag and save it for later. After I do this, keeping the humidity levels up in this tank should be a breeze. Even though it's mostly covered up, there's still going to be quite a bit of a uh, water evaporating so I won't have to spray the, up the top of the tank so much some sword plants and I'm probably going to add more later. They're not reproducing as fast as I wanted them to. Well, I think I might just have the right amount of substrate. I'm pretty good at guessing on that kind of thing. After this, I'm going to add some water, not as high as it's going to go in the end, but I'm going to start just getting this little bit out here. I'm going to start cycling this tank. I really don't think that will affect the mantis not going to be enough amount. Well, basically how you cycle a tank is by you can do it one of two ways. One, you can use fish that you don't particularly care about, put them in the tank, and oh, well, why don't I start with what cycling is. It's basically building up a an amount of beneficial bacteria that's required to convert ammonia into nitrites, and then after that into nitrates, and nitrates are used by plants to grow. So without having a cycled tank, the ammonia is just going to sit in the water and slowly poison your fish. As I said, the way of going about that is by either using fish that you don't like and letting their uh, feces naturally, letting their feces naturally create a cycle or you can either add ammonia yourself and just, you know, chemically cycle the water, which I'm probably going to do this time. It's a lot more humane instead of trying to use fish to do it. Move this out a bit, cover up that little bit of uh, extra foam, throw some more in the back. I'm probably not going to be uh, putting a filter in this. Instead, I'm going to try and create passive filtration by just having a wide assortment of microorganisms. And I might add a uh, jet in here, maybe stick it in the back where it can't be seen. That'll help. This looks good. That'll help to uh, circulate the water a little bit. But mostly I'm going to be relying on plants to do all the filtering. I've been doing a lot of experiments with... Uh, aquariums without using any sort of filter inside. Right. 
Now I need a little bowl here. The point of the bowl is to allow the water to have a surface pit. So we'll kick up too much dirt. And I'm using distilled water now. I didn't use distilled water when I was cleaning the gravel, but that would have been a waste of a lot of distilled water. If anyone's wondering about that mantis, it moved to the back of the tank. Ah, oh, crap, it's porous. That bowl's wanting to float right now, the only thing... Oh? No? No. I thought it was going to float. Alright, that's good. I'm only just going to add this one and a fourth gallon of water for now. I don't want to make it too high, because I still need to add the plants. And as you can see, the water's not too murky. I'm also going to be taking some water from a fully cycled tank and using that instead of filling up the entire thing with uh, just plain water and starting from scratch. That's a good thing about having multiple fish tanks. Right. I'm also adding filter from my aquaponic tank that I just leave lying on the bottom of the tank to absorb beneficial bacteria just in case I decide I want to start a new tank so I can speed up the process. And this is also a gallon of its filthy, dirty, disgusting fish water loaded with beneficial bacteria. Again, so I could speed up the process. Yeah. The water looks a bit cloudy now, but it'll clear up. Just gotta, gotta give it a little bit of time to settle. Looks like it's high enough. Okay. I'm going to start the ammonia cycling process after I'm done putting in all the plants. So for now, I'm going to just start with Java moss, which you can see a little bit on that uh, filter cartridge, which is going to sit in there for about five days, but I'm going to get some more now. Java moss is an excellent <clears throat> low light plant. It'll basically grow out of control pretty quickly and it's great for getting nitrates absorbed out of the water. That's some of the ones that I was um, left marinating so to speak in my aquaponic tank ready for this setup. I'm going to actually leave this tank for about 24 hours just to make sure that there are no leaks anywhere because that would be absolutely devastating if there was. Okay, so before I go out and try and find some plants from Petco, I wanted to do a water test on this before I added the ammonia. This left vial here is the ammonia detector. Um, ammonia test and then this right one here is the nitrate test. Basically how it works is ammonia gets released into the tank through fish feces or whatever kind of feces it gets converted into nitrites which I didn't do a test for yet and then nitrates 
the more yellow it is, the, well, the more neon, like this is a dull yellow right here, which is exactly where I would want it to be. And over here, the lighter orange it is, the better. The darker the red it is, the worse it is. So these are good signs. I took this water out of my aquaponic tank, which has a filter fish in it. And so I'm really not surprised that, that it, the water looks pretty well as is, even with me just adding a little bit of ammonia yesterday. But I just wanted to test that before I added a little bit more and I figured I'd explain how the cycling works anyway. So this drop here is full of ammonia. And what I'm going to do is just inject it directly into the tank to test how cycled the tank actually is. Because it came from a already cycled source, I wouldn't be surprised if I barely have to cycle the tank at all. Which is a good thing about having multiple tanks, because you could always take the water or the filter medium, like the one down there, directly out of one tank and put it into another to kickstart things. Otherwise, it'll take you a month starting a fish tank from scratch, and that's assuming that you care about your fish. So I'm just going to add the ammonia to this tank. And then I'll check it in about an hour or so. In the meantime, I'm going to go out and uh, get some plants for this tank. Okay, so I just got back from Petco and I picked up a couple of plants. Java fern. Uh, Anubius. Anubius. And Java Fern. Nice Chester, taking interest in everything that doesn't have anything to do with him. And then I got a piece of driftwood. Gonna have to boil the hell out of this after I collect all the extra pieces of Java moss on it. Not even really necessary. This thing was filthy when it was in the uh, pet store covered in muck and whatnot. And then I also grabbed some fish for my aquaponic tank. With these items, I should be good with all the decoration for this tank. Now I need to remember next time to never put convenience over quality. I just wanted to go down to Petco and buy some moderately decent plants. Well, I guess what you get, what you pay for when you buy from chain stores. I mean, honestly, it could be worse, but the quality of some of these plants is really terrible, and I already pulled off the dead parts. On the plus side here, you can see that there's some new java fern buds starting to pop up on this old leaf, so I guess that's sort of interesting. The only good thing about dealing with chain stores is they never know what they have.
Okay, so I'm going to leave. Sorry about that. I'm going to leave that filter in there for a couple more days just to make sure the tank gets uh, properly cycled. Put that little piece of wood in there. And basically that's the extent of what I'm going to be doing with the bottom. I set it up like a typical shrimp tank, if anyone's familiar. I, oh crap, I left the uh, water bowl in there. I'll get it in a minute. But I went with the low light um, types of plants. Java moss, which is the spindly plant. This plant right here, which is Anubias. And then the plant back there is Java fern. Now this combination of plants, the fact that there won't be a ridiculous amount of light really won't hurt the setup too much. Java moss in particular actually likes low light conditions. Mm. So in about a month or so, once or until I'm sure that this tank is properly cycled, I'll be putting something into the bottom. If I can't find the diving bell spider, I'll decide what to do from there. But, um, yeah. It doesn't look that bad. Most of the time, whenever I'm done with projects, I absolutely hate them for a couple of days. It's just, I guess it's just artist angst, something like that. But this one, it, it turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm sure there are better aquascapes done. But this one, I, I like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to do the touch-ups on the side of the tank. I wanna cover up all this, uh, I know there's a sheen right here. There's bark and there's just ugliness from the uh, different layers of foam and it should look a lot better with a little bit of a paint. I just did this um, part up here just so I can see the difference, but I'm just going to get straight into this. Higher tank will look a little bit more. How do I put it? Your eyes won't wander to the parts that look raw, like the foam. So you'll be able to focus on the actual interior of the tank even better than before. So that's it, guys. This project turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. 
I wasn't too sure about how it would turn out, especially with such a strange idea it is to have a uh, false trap. Well, not a trap door, but a door separating the water portion and the land portion. But my god, it really did come out really nice, and I'm quite proud of myself. And this is a rarity because usually I will hate my work for days and weeks on end after finishing it, but this one it turned out super nice. And it's actually given me quite a few ideas about creating my next piece. Like the uh, very shallow soil area. And for future projects, like instead of putting water portions on the bottom, I'm thinking that I could also create display burrows for creatures like tarantulas and scorpions and giant centipedes. I'll be able to make um, bottoms like this and then put foam along the corners and then put whatever is um, still showing with red film over it so that the creature won't be able to see me but I can watch it so they'll feel secure. And then during the day I can have growing plants on the top and at night, they can come up out of a log entrance or whatever sort of entrance I make. I wouldn't make it look exactly like this tank because I want each of my tanks to be different. But this one turned out really nice. And I'm actually pretty proud of myself, which is pretty rare. Anywho, my next project is going to be my personal choice because I've been wanting to do this one for a while now. It's going to be a 20 gallon long standing orchid tank. The tank height itself is 30 inches for anyone who was curious. I went with height over anything else. But anyway, uh, thanks guys for anyone. This thing does not want to stay up. Anyway, thanks guys for... Uh, watching this long. I really hope that you enjoyed my videos and um, I can't wait to show you the work I do on my next orchid tank. And um, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed these last two videos and I will see you next week with whatever video it is that I decide to make. So catch you in the next one. Bye guys.